Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Drita Hill claims her daughter's father broke their house-sitting agreement when his lady friend moved in. Greg Steins says he's not romantically involved with the plaintiff, and their teen was a handful, so he needed help. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello, thank you, Sean. Good day, everyone. Good, Good day. day. This is the case of Hill versus Steins. Ms. Hill, you are suing Mr. Steins for $7,200 for breaking your house rules. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right, and Mr. Steins, you say you don't owe plaintiff anything. All right, breaking your house rules. Well, what, what are the house rules? Well, ma'am, Your Honor, um, my name is Drita Hill, um, and I'm suing for $7,200 um, for moving his ex-girlfriend in my home. When into I, where? Into my home. <laughs> yes. Oh, really? Yes, no. ma'am. No. Um, we okay. had an agreement. Um, I was going to New York uh, for a job, and it was a high-paying salary job, so I took it. I jumped on it. I was thinking about my daughter's future, um, our future, you know? And so I asked my sister to take her for a while, you know, spend time with her, whatever. Yeah, I don't want to uproot her from her family, her, her friends here, her life, you know? And so. this is her father? Yes. So you decided that, that you would stay here, that he would stay here with her? Well, um, yeah, after asking my sister, yes. Okay, um, so with we, her father? Yes, I mean, All why right. not? He's family, better family than stranger. Absolutely. So um, I brought it to him, I called him and let him know, and he, um, he agreed, you know, but I told him uh, there's stipulations now. Nobody moving in my home without my permission. I don't know why anyone would, but, you know, without my permission, that's not going to happen. Um, but he can have visitors, guests, two nights, the max, you know, not repetitive. Um, and he has a group, like uh, his friends coming, spend like twice twice a month usually. You can have a little party yeah. of friends, a little, little get-together. Absolutely. And so we had agreed to... Um, for rent free. I told him he could kind of stay rent free. He didn't have to pay any rent. Besides, he didn't even know if he wanted to renew his lease anyways. So it gave him time to think about that um, and spend time with his daughter. So to be clear, this is your ex-husband? No, 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 no. Uh, we just had a one night stand and resulted in my daughter. All right, so you yeah. all were never married. You weren't even really in a relationship when you conceived your daughter. Correct. All right. But because you needed to take this job, you decided better her father stay in the house with her. Mm -hmm. She can be stable in her environment. Yes. And you'll go out and get this job. How was this, what was the ending of this? Was she supposed to come and be with you at some point? Or was she gonna go off to college? How old is your daughter? My daughter's 18 now, and uh, the whole plan was for her to go to college. She was gonna go to Arizona State University. Okay. And, um, and so I didn't want to uproot her from none of this. So you say he had a girlfriend in your, in, in your house? That's what my daughter told me, yes. And you're, you own this house or you're renting this house? No, it was inherited from my okay, parents. Okay, so you yeah. own the house? Yes. All right, and you say your daughter saw? Yes, my daughter was the one that called. When I, uh, the third month, she called me and told me that dad had moved his girlfriend All in. All right, I want to hear from your witness. Please stand and step up to the podium. Before I get to you, though, so, Mr. Steins, this agreement that Ms. Hill has outlined where you were to stay in the house, you agreed to all of the rules, one of which is nobody staying in her house. Absolutely, Your Honor. You agreed to it because... It was a win-win for all of us. I got to spend more time with my daughter. I work about 60, 70 hours a week. Don't get, only get to see her on the weekends and, you know, uh, you know, the summertime. So it was a win-win. I get to see her in her senior year before she goes off to Arizona State University. So I thought it was a great solution for all of us, a great so situation. So you agree? Absolutely. So, Brittany, I'd like to come to you. 
and ask you, so how did this start? Did it start off okay, you with your dad at the house? At first it didn't start okay because uh, my father preferred eating microwave food and you know, I'm close with my mom so she would cook homemade food. So it was an adjustment? Yes, and we would take, get takeouts and microwave food. It wasn't bad at first, but it continued and you know, I got tired of the microwave and the takeout. I well, you're 18, you're not eight. Coming up. It never ceases to amaze me. When people get here, they got all the answers. <laughs> if you got all the answers and running your mouth Come on. all day, Come on. you could have solved this instead of wasting my time. Come on now. And later. It was his very first walk, and in fact, as a result of this incident, I was fired from the job. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Drita Hill, who brought Greg Steins to court over broken house rules. So anyway, I want to get to the part that is the issue of this suit. Who was in the house? So my father's girlfriend came in. Uh, April helped us around the house. She cooked for us. She did our laundry. So life was easier living with my dad. Oh, wait, and hold on. So you liked it? Not exactly. Oh. I mean, yes, like, it was nice to have a female's touch around the house, and I could Hold get- up, I'm a, a female. I'm She's a female. But you were in there for a year, so I needed, like, a female's opinion and help and support. Like, when I go shopping, like, makeup and stuff like that, I would get a better opinion from Did April than my father. Did she have to live in the house to give you that? No. Did you know your dad was dating this woman for like an extended period of time or were you just home one day and all of a sudden, bam, she was there? My father mentioned he was dating her, but she, I, at first she was coming to do these things for us and she would leave. But I went to my mother's room and I saw her clothes in the wardrobe. How often did your girlfriend come to the house? April was a wonderful person. She came over about maybe three or four times a week. I work 60, 70 hours a week, and so I needed some assistance because my culinary skills and my domestic skills were not up to snuff. And I, you know, gladly admit that. So I, I was going to take any kind of help I could get. So when she, <laughs> when she, when she was, when she you wanted to help me that. out, I said, "Come on," and she, and she would teach me how to cook certain things that she made that that uh, Brittany liked. So I wanted, I made a concerted effort to try to be more uh, involved in the culinary uh, um, selections that my daughter could have some what she liked. So Again, you've never heard of YouTube? In a microwave. Well, I, you know, I use YouTube for electronics and stuff like that, but I think that's an excellent idea and I should have done that. You're absolutely right. So I like the bottom plan. line was it was a convenience to have this woman here because absolutely. she was doing all things you didn't feel like doing. We're here to tell the truth. So right. just let's call it. Absolutely. You enjoyed having a woman around there because she could do all of the things you really didn't feel like doing. What evidence did you bring to court today? Because I think I'm about done with this. Ma'am, oh I have um, the, the text messages from me and, and Greg's um, situation where we agreed and how my daughter told me about this girl, April. Did you bring any evidence to court, Mr. Stein? Absolutely, absolutely. What is that evidence? Thank you. It's a text message of us corresponding. Brittany told me you got a girl living there. And she's got a drawer. It's not like that. Call, I'll call you later. Call All right. later. Hey, thank you for everything. This is a win-win situation. You and our daughter can spend more time together. Oh, this is you setting the situation up. And then you texting back saying there's a girl in the house. I was trying to, get, I was trying to right. confront the situation in a proper way, but he's like blowing me off. And then I'm like, oh, what do you, what do you, you act like this is little. This is not. But you got to understand, Your Honor, I caught him in bed in our past, you know, with a woman in our home. So there's so, a reason. That's the problem. I mean, so this is a reoccurring thing. Exactly. So then you were on notice that he was about up to no good. So why in the world would you give him full access and permission to live in your house with your daughter because you were desperate and you needed help at the time because you made a choice to go get a job that you thought would make a better future for you and your daughter. So you were left to either say, I either take Brittany with me and uproot her out of school, 
I have a stranger move into my home or I let her father call live there. He's talking about he never spends time with her so much and Got I it. figured it was a great situation. Got it. And you figured wrong. Yeah. And that's okay because sometimes things look great when you think about them. They look great on paper, but in the actual experience of living it, you find out that that is not as great as you thought it would be. That's right. what happened in this living situation. You all have not set up a lease. He hasn't broken anything. House rules are something that people, they, they respect, right? I don't know how you expect a man to respect your house when he's already shown that he doesn't respect you. I just you figured I'd give him a second chance to get, I get right get with his it. daughter. That was 10 but, years ago. But listen, sometimes second chances you lead you to, to realize yes. that there should be no more chances. The court does not find that you had any type of enforceable agreement. The bottom line, you should have just come back, kicked him out, found somebody else to stay with your daughter, but now I you try to backtrack and charge him rent because he no, had a girl sleeping there. No, ma'am, I did when she there. told me. I did. This hill. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you see what I was dealing with. It, it, listen, it, it just, it never ceases to amaze me when people get here, they got all the answers. <laughs> if you got all the answers and running your mouth Come on. all day, Come on. you could have solved this instead of wasting my time. Come on now. Yes, ma'am. You don't have the answers. Yes, ma'am. You trusted that somebody would do something for you in a way that respected you and your home and your daughter. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They didn't. So you learned a lesson. Worst part is, I think your feelings really hurt because your daughter done sat and testified on your side of the aisle that she liked it. I'm done with this nonsense. Mm -hmm. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. Judgment for the defendant. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. Do you have final thoughts with each other? Oh, absolutely. I, he did thought, thought There that. was never any agreement to pay rent in the first place, so I decided she can enforce it. Coming up. Let's not make fun of Walter, because it's definitely not his fault. I'm sorry about what happened to Walter. Yes, um, I am. You should pay. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Michael Welks claims he lost a client when a dog he was hired to walk ran through a broken fence and into an icy pool. Aaron Provolone says his fence is fine and the dog shouldn't have been on his property. Good day, everyone. Good day. Good day. This is the case of Welks versus Provolone. Mr. Welks, you are suing Mr. Provolone for $532 for unsafe property conditions. And the defendant, you say that you're not responsible. What happened? I'm a professional dog walker. So on the day in question, I was walking a client's poodle. Um, and unfortunately, at the apartment building, the poodle escaped the leash. It went darting straight for the pool, which does have a fence around it. But it is a negligently built fence because the spaces are so wide that a dog, a child, could fit through. Additionally, the pool was not covered and it was winter. So when the dog escaped, it jumped into the pool. It looked, appeared to be drowning. I had went over to the fence and it was locked. I jump over the gate, jump into the freezing cold water and rescue the dog. I had to bring the dog to the animal hospital where I incurred these fees that the defendant is responsible for given the fence was negligent. How long had you been walking Walter? It was his very first walk and in fact as a result of this incident and the negligently maintained fence and the near drowning of the poodle, I was fired from the job. So I lost an additional $400. So you live at this particular complex? Correct, Your Honor. And you say the fence is not bit, built well? That's right. The, the spaces between the posts are so wide that a dog, a child, as happened, easily can slip through. So, Mr. Provolone, you are the property manager or the owner? I'm the property manager and owner, and All I right. live at the residence as well. When he signed his lease, he was made aware that there are no pets on the property without management approval. He knew I was the a lease dog clearly walker, says that. Yeah, He but knew that. Absolutely, but doesn't mean I gave you permission to walk the dogs or keep the dogs on the property. I feel bad that this happened with the pet, but rest assured, our property 
is very well up to code. Does anybody have a picture of the fence? I certainly do, Your Honor. I'd like to see that. Coming up. Did you bring a copy of the broken? I didn't. I lost my phone. So the pictures. You are... lost your phone. You're about to lose this case if you don't have any evidence. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Michael Welks, who blames Aaron Provolone for a dog walking disaster. Here is the fence. Seems like a pretty standard looking fence. Your Honor, that's an old photo. There were also broken slats at the time of the incident. Did which... you bring a copy of the broken? I didn't. I lost my phone. So the pictures. You are... lost your phone. You're about to lose this case if you don't have any evidence. I brought a picture of Walter the Poodle, which you can see is a medium sized <laughs> dog. Your Honor, take a look okay. at that dog. So Let me first medium... look at the lease agreement. This is a no pet facility. Should you have a pet, there's a $150 fee per month. Did you pay the $150 a month pet fee? No, Your Honor, because I do, never had a pet. I don't have any there pets. You go. I'm a professional dog walker. But you don't have a pet inside of your apartment? Uh, occasionally, yes, but it's, I certainly don't have a pet that resides with me. The bottom line is, is you thought you lived there and you could use the premises to just walk the dog because the dog didn't stay there with you consistently. You could say that it wasn't your dog. Correct. This dog, obviously, was very small. If you look at the picture, the fur on it, if you shave that dog, he'd probably be a little bit larger than a squirrel and certainly uh, he could pass through those. Your Honor, the dog is at least 15 pounds. Not Let's long. not make fun of Walter because it's definitely not his fault. I'm sorry about what happened to Walter. Yes, um, I am. This and is. You should pay. You should pay. Certainly. This not. is your dog walking agreement. Yes. That you had with the client. Correct. You had to pay for the vet expenses because you were responsible because the owner believed that you were negligent because their dog got loose. I just decided to cover the expense. You just wanted to do that to be a right. good sport. Correct. Well, Walter is a cutie, very adorable. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. I hate this happened to Walter, but like I said, this isn't Walter's fault. Mr. Welks, this is your fault. You knew that your complex did not allow pets unless you paid the pet fee you probably would have even had to have an approval of the pet. I'm happy that you went in to save him, but there is absolutely nothing in this testimony or this evidence, even with respect to the way the fence is designed, I don't see it here, that suggests to me that Mr. Provolone or his property was in any way in a condition that would constitute him being negligent. For that reason, your case is dismissed. Judgment for the defendant. Court is adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. Well, as they say, every dog has their day. Justice was served today. The defendant knew before I even moved in that I was a professional dog walker and verbally agreed that dogs could be on the premises. His entire testimony here today was a lie and justice was not served. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.